नमस्कार आई एम विजय लाल प्रधान एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन स्टैटिस्टिक्स त्रिवन यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द सिंपल लीनियर रिग्रेशन सो रिग्रेशन एनालिसिस दैट एग्जामिन द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन टू और मोर देन टू वेरिएबल्स अंडर आवर स्टडी सो इट इज द स्टडी ऑफ इन्फ्लुएंसिंग one or more independent variable on dependent variable so the relationship which will study that can be used to predict the value of dependent variable for the given independent variable so today we are studying simple linear regression so simple in the means that the it is the mathematical tool which where there will be one dependent variable and one independent variable so usually dependent variable is denoted by y whereas independent variable is denoted by x so dependent variable is a variable which is used for the prediction of the values of unknown variable so there are various non linear regressions also but here we will study the simple linear regression equation so simple in the that mean that there is the one independent variable and one dependent variable so linear that means the we will study we will approximate the relationship by using a straight line here i have shown this equation of a straight line y is equals to beta naught beta 1x plus epsilon so epsilon is a error whereas beta naught is y intercept of that line whereas beta 1 is also slope of the straight line so if there is more than one independent variable then that is said to be a multiple linear regression so here i have shown the regression line where this line represents that there is a positive relationship when the value of x increases the value of y also increases in this relationship the value of y decreases while increasing the value of x so in this figure we can see that there is no change in y y while the value of x changes so this there is in this figure we can see that there is no relationship so regression analysis the prime objective is to use the current information for the prediction for the future event so the current information that can be find in the form of database so here i have shown you the two database a peer observations are there there are two variables lot size and man hours for the 30 lot size man hours use is 73 for the 20 lot size man hours use was 50 so a peer observation was formed and this variables one variable is said to be a dependent variable next is independent variable the variable which affect the another variable is said to be an independent variable the affected variable is said to be a dependent variable similarly in this example our study and grade in examination there are two variables here we can say that grade in exam is depend on the study hours so study hours is said to be a independent variable and grade in exam is the dependent variable so in simple linear reg uh, regression there will be a peer observations under the analysis so uh, the previous data i have shown here in the form of scatter diagram so we are going to find out the relationship between these two variables what type of relationship is there that we are going to find out so the the dependent variable that will be presented in the y axis and independent variable generally will represent in the x axis and we'll see their relationship so the functional relationship y is equals to f x that we have to observe here if that shows a straight line type of behavior then we can fit here the linear regression let's see next example also the study hours in grade in examination the change in the yeah, x study hours that is said to be a dependent uh, sorry independent variable that affect in the grade in example this is 
dependent variable so we can see by this scatter diagram there is positive relationship so the the pattern we can see that is a straight line so we can treat here the straight line regression equation so let's talk about the formal statement of the model generally regression model linear regression simple linear regression we can represent in the form of y is equals to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon naught beta naught and beta 1 are the parameter as you know that the parameters are the measurement from the population and epsilon naught is the error and we have to check the assumptions here the deviations error epsilon naught are independent with a mean zero and variance sigma square so the values of regression parameter beta naught and beta one are not known so we have to estimate of these values by using this regression line y is equals to b naught plus beta one x beta one is also said to be a slope and which indicates that the change in y due to the one unit change in the x that is the independent variable similarly beta naught is also said to be a intercept so it is the value of y when the value of x takes the value zero so regression line as we talk y hat is equals to b naught plus b1 x here the regression line it shows the relationship between the variable x and y so we can observe the uh, scatter diagram scatter plot either it shows the behavior of straight line then we have to fit it so the estimation y hat that is equals to beta naught plus beta one x here in this relationship we have to estimate the value of beta naught and beta one these values we can get from the observed data so to get this value we have to use the least square estimate so by using the least square we can estimate the value of beta naught and beta one so while finding this value we have to minimize the sum of square of errors as y is the obtained data and y hat is the estimated data obtained data and estimated data is square and sum sum of square due to error this is the error term so we have to minimize the error term so y hat as we stated that y hat is equals to beta naught plus beta one x by putting this value in this y hat we will get these observations so these equations sum of square due to error we have to minimize it so here we will use the calculus to obtain the value of beta 1 and beta naught so by using calculus as i had talked uh, in the class also so value of beta 1 we can get by this equation summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar divided by summation x minus x bar on expansion we will get that it is equals to n summation x y minus summation x summation y divided by n summation x square minus summation x whole square so by using this equation we can get the value of b1 similarly the b naught we can get by using this relationship y y bar minus b1 x bar we can get the value of beta 1 b1 here and we can put the value of b1 here to get the b naught so b1 also can be find out by using this relationship where r is the correlation and standard deviation of y divided by standard deviation of x by using this relationship also we can get the value of b1 for that we need the correlation and standard deviations so let's see this example the value of y and value of x is given so here we can fit the regression line and to get the value of y so this is the example of weekly advertising expenditure denoted by x and weekly sales denoted by y for example the first data is this indicate that 1250 is uh, the sales whereas the advertisement expenditure is 41 in the same way other data are given so from this data we can find out the different values submission y submission x 
So this is the equation to get the value of b1. For that we need summation x y, summation x, summation y, summation x whole square, summation x square. And here, so there are 10 pair of data. So number of observation is 10. Summation x we got 564. Summation x square after squaring the observation and submit similar summation y and summation x y we got it. So putting this values here, summation x y, summation x, summation y, summation x square, summation x whole square. Putting these all the values, you will get the value of b1. B1 we got it as the 10.8. And B dot will get by the using the equation that is the y bar minus B1 x bar. By putting these values, we got the value it has the 828. So we got the value of B1 and B naught by putting these values in the equation, we will get the regression equation. So this 10.8 that indicate that if your expenditure is increased by one unit then the value of sales that will be increases by 10.8 so this is it has a significant role so this is the regression equation which can be used to predict the value of sales so if you put the value of expenditure multiply it by 10.8 and addition with 828 that gives the expected sales so here Fitted values for the sample data are obtained by substituting value of Ax into the estimated regression function. So if advertisement expenditure is rupees 50, then your sales, expected sales will be 1368. Multiplying this to addition with this. So this is said to be a point estimate or we can say it as a forecast. So regression model in the business performance of organizations partly in the terms of their sales relative to the advertisement expenditure. We might expect the sales to increase linearly as advertisement expenditure larger. With the individual variation of the same advertisement expenditure, the regression model we can write it as the sales is equals to beta naught plus beta 1 into advertisement expenditure plus error term. As we have added this year error terms because with the same advertising expenditure, the sales that may be are different. So that is due to the other different factors. The slope beta 1 is a usually rate of change. It is the expected increase in the sales associated with the additional advertisement expenditure. That means the one unit if you increase in the advertisement expenditure, then what will be increases or changes in the sales. Similarly, beta naught is that is that describe the value of sales when there is no advertisement expenditure while this has no any statistical meaning similarly the advertisement expenditure does not completely determine the sales the term error in the model accounts for the different among the individual organizations with the same advertisement expenditures that is the that may be affected by the different other factors that may be a share stores location Maybe the example. So the difference between the observed value yi and y corresponding the fitted value that can be denoted by ei that is equals to yi minus y i. That's this is our estimated value. This is our observed value. The difference is denoted by e is which is called the error term, also said to be a residual. A residual is highly useful for the studying whether the given regression model is appropriate or not for the given data. Let's see this uh, previous example. So as we stated the regression equation y is equals to 828 plus 10.8 yaks. So using this equation we can estimate the value of y. So if you put the value of yaks is equals to 41 in this equation then we will got the y hat as a 1270.8. So the actual data we got is 1250, but our estimated data is 270.8. So there is the difference of 20.8. So this is said to be an error term.
mitral tops it has a significant role on the model either model is good or not we can estimate it by using this residue so the variance term the error term ei in the regression model needs to be estimated for the variety of purpose it gives indication of the variability of the probability distribution of y and indeed it make the reference that the concerning about the regression function and how good is the prediction is so simple regression equation that estimate the value of sigma square and it is nothing but the average value of this error square sum error square sum is average value we will use here the degree of freedom n minus 2 to estimate the uh, s square value so you can get the standard deviation by checking the square root of this square term sum of square so yes estimate the standard deviation sigma of the error term epsilon naught in the statistical model for the simple linear regression so here we can find out the standard deviation yes y x so we got as we got the residual you square it and sum it then divide it by the degree of freedom here degree of freedom is 9 because there is 10 observations so we can use 9 degree of freedom to get the value of s y x after dividing it you have to take the square root to get this s y x standard deviation so a standard deviation by using this formula we can get the standard deviation so here the sum of square the variance the residual term has a very significant role so we have to calculate the different terminology which is used in this analysis sum of square due to error that is sum of square due to error this this term so to get this term there are different formula which can be used so summation y minus y hat whole square that can be calculated it has the sum of square due to y minus b1 sum of square due to x and y so sum of square that can be expressed in this term on expansion we will get this term this expansion is this so sum of square due to error we can use it as the we can calculate it as the summation y square minus a summation y minus b1 summation x y so if we have the data y and x and if you have already calculated the value of a and b1 then you can use this equation to get the value of sum of square error so as in the previous data we have calculated from the same observation after estimating the regression equation so the same thing we can calculate by using this formula also so there are the different terminology we have to use here for the significance of the regression analysis so either the, the the our observations are significant or not we have to check the significance of beta naught uh, sorry b naught and b1 so to 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 find out this is, is significant we must need the regret standard error of beta naught so a standard error of b naught we can calculate by using this formula and on expansion we will get this formula similarly a standard error of b1 can be estimated by yes this is the mean sum of square square root of mean sum of square yes is and sum of square due to x is square root can be used to find out the standard error of b1 so a standard of b1 also can be calculated by this formula if the observation so these are the different formula which we have to use to find out the standard of the error of beta naught and beta 1 so this to know this is very good but don't worry about it because there are many statistical software which can be used to get these values and it uh, uh, after you use you input the data it automatically gives you the output similarly you should know about the confidence interval of this regression coefficients beta naught and beta 1 so beta naught regression coefficient that you have to multiply this standard error by t value to get the confidence interval similarly uh, you can get uh, this equation to get the confidence interval of b1 so 
you can find out the value of t that is equals to beta naught is divided by standard error of beta naught and similarly t you can get it the b1 the standard error of b1 if you divide it then you will get the value of t so this t value that can be used to test significance of the regression coefficient b naught and beta 1 so here we will suppose that the relationship does not exist that means the beta 1 is equal to 0 in, in reality in the same way alternative hypothesis we have supposed that the beta 1 is not is equal to 0 that means that there exists a relationship that means the relationship is uh, existence so here i have shown these two figures there are some observations so here the, the, the regression is not significant there are many observations show which indicates that the, there is no significance. So either the observations are significant or not that we have to use this relationship. When x and y have no relationship then regression coefficient becomes zero. The regression slope becomes zero in either of these two conditions. This In these two conditions regression coefficients becomes zero. So, as this values I have shown you already, that t value will get the beta 1 divided by standard error beta 1 that gives the bt value. So, this t value is used to test the significance of regression coefficients and where a standard error of b1 can be stimulated by this equation. So, the finding of regression coefficients and the fitting of this regression is not sufficient. So we have to test whether this regression coefficients, regression equations are good or not for the prediction. So, if the relationship is a strong one, prediction of dependent variable can be relatively accurate and the conclusion drawn from the analysis may be given a high degree of confidence. So, one of the this fit measure is mean sum of square error as we have seen it. So, that is the absolute measure depends on the data. That means the if the data is uh, represented in paisa, if the data is uh, represented in the rupees, then the uh, MAC that will be according to the paisa or rupees. In the same way, relative measure of the regression feed is the coefficient of determination. So, it is denoted by the R square coefficient of determination. So, the measure of variation that can be drawn by in this way, sum of square due to total that is equals to sum of square due to regression plus sum of square due to error. So, sum of square due to total this is denoted by this. This is the mean value and this is the obtained value and this is the total variation. So, after fitting this regression equation then for this data the estimated value will be this point. So, the difference between the real data and estimated data is said to be a error and this error that can be explained as the unexplained variation. Similarly, the estimated point and the mean data, this difference is said to be a explained variance. This is explained by the regression and not explained by the regression and this is a total variation. This variation used in the uh, regression analysis for the significance of different measures. So, total sum of square is a sum of the regression sum of square and inner sum of square. Explained variance, unexplained variance that gives you the total variance, where it can be written as the y minus y bar whole square and this sum, and this is sum of square due to regression, y i minus y bar whole square sorry your y hat minus y bar whole square and sum of square due to error is y minus y hat whole square. So, the fit measures, there are different fit measures and among these different fit measures one of the measure is the r square. r square is the sum of square due to regression divided by sum of square due to total. So, it can be written as the 1 minus sum of square due to error divided by sum of square due to total. So, if you find out this sum of square due to error, total or regression, then easily you can, you can find out the value of r square. 
So similarly, standard error of regression, that is the square root of mean sum of square error, as you got the value of sum of square root to error, then divide it by n minus 2, that is the degree of freedom, and take a square root to get the standard error of regression. So R square, which you have calculated in here, is also said to be a coefficient of determination. And as sum of square due to error that lies between 0 to sum of square due to total, so R square is always lies between 0 to 1. So we may interpret R square as the proportionate reduction of the total variability in Y associated with the use of independent variable X. While using this independent variable X, the proportionate reduction of the variability is denoted by this R square. As R square value is greater, then the variation there will be less. If all the observations fall in the fetal regression line, then R square becomes 1 and sum of square becomes 0. If the slope of the fetal regression line, that is y bar, then b1 becomes 0 and R square becomes 0. So the closer to R square to 1, the greater is said to be a degree of linear relationship between the x and y is high. And the square root of r square is called coefficient of correlation as you know about it. So correlation coefficient that is equal to plus minus square root of r square. r square is always positive. So if there is the negative relationship that means the increases in the x that gives the increases sorry decreases in y then we have to push the negative value. If increases in the x also gives the increases in y value then we have to take the positive value. So correlation coefficient also can be used that can be calculated by using this formula r is equal to summation x minus x bar y minus y bar square root of summation summation is left here okay summation x minus x bar all square and summation y minus y bar all square on expansion we will get these values so we have to use an over table for the overall fit of the regression line either this regression line is fit or not on the data, for that we have to use ANOVA test. It is also a uh, test of F. Yeah. So as we have calculated total sum of square, sum of square due to error, sum of square due to regression, then we have to fit this in the ANOVA table. And source of variation is regression, error, total. So as the regression equation has only one dependent variable, so the degree of freedom is 1 here and total observation is n, n minus 1 is the uh, degree of freedom for the total and by taking the differences of these two we will get the, the degree of freedom for the error is n minus 2. So sum of square due to r if you divide as a degree of freedom then mean sum of square due to regression we will get it. Similarly sum of square due to error if you divide it by n minus 2 you will get the mean sum of square error. So, by taking off ratio of these two, you will get the F value. Now, the degree of freedom is 1 and N minus 2. So, you can compare this calculated value with the calcul uh, sorry, tabulated value which you will get from the table. As you told how to find out this from the Excel also. Using the Excel, you can get the, the value, uh, uh, tabulated value of F. Now, let's see on the previous data as these are the sales and these are the values of uh, sorry expenditure advertisement expenditure now on calculating these all the values you can get the value of b1 and b0 and the different calculations here i have done x square y square squaring these terms and x y multiplication y hat after getting the value of b1 and B naught, 828, 10.8. By putting the value of x is equals to 41, we got this different hat values. And similarly, residual, residual, square. Then y minus y bar square, x minus x bar square. After calculating these all the values, we got the total sum of square. Y minus y bar whole square sum is total sum of square. Total sum of square, we got it this, this value, this value. We can get it by 
direct calculation summation y square minus summation y by y whole square divided by here also we can calculate it and you can tally these two data same <coughs> similarly sum of square duty error that also can be find out by this formula as you have shown in the previous slide summation y square minus b naught summation y minus b1 summation x y this can be used to get this value you see this value sum of square duty error as sum of square duty error this value these two values are same <coughs> <coughs> So, this ANOVA table <coughs> you got from the previous data, put this value total sum of square, sum of square duty error, and divide the degree of freedom. You got this value. So, <coughs> F ratio you got is 20.47. So, from table with uh, 1 degree of freedom, 1 and 8 degree of freedom, from table you got the value 5.32. Now, what you can say about it? <coughs> as f ratio is 20.47 is greater than 5.32 and we can say that the f calculated value is greater than the tabulated value regression model is significant so the model fits to the data so for the further analysis for the further calculations we can use this regression model <coughs> so the same thing that we can do by using excel tool so i will show you the Excel data. So this is the value of y, this is the value of x, and we can use Excel to calculate this and our table. So for that, what you have to do is go in the data. In data, uh, there is the <coughs> analysis, data analysis, data analysis, where it is as well. Data analysis, then under this data analysis, there is regression click on regression then ok then put this values put this values uh, a and b11 and output range okay. get the <coughs> this output summary output here r square value is this this is r square value standard error and 10 observation and all of ANOVA table you got it so Degree of freedom for regression is 1, residual 8, total 9, sum of square, mean sum of square, we have value and is significant value is so near. So, <coughs> so, this value we can get it by Excel. The P value is given and we have tabulated value is 5.31. So, by comparing these two also you can give the conclusion and by using this p value also you can give the interpretation so by using excel you can get this values similarly other significance significance of b naught and b1 that you have to do it so for this standard error of b naught and standard error of b1 you have to calculate it so by using this formula you can calculate the standard error of b naught so mean sum of square Submission x square square root divided by n sum of square to x. These are all calculations we have done in the previous slide. This calculations, these different calculations you have to use there. So here we see we have already find out this value and submission x square is this, sum of square, submission x minus x bar only square is this, multiplied it by 10, then you will get value 136. 0.129 and now t value <coughs> t value is the ratio of b naught and standard error of b naught so <coughs> b naught is 828.1 and standard error of b naught is 136.1 so you got the value 6.08 so <coughs> to compare this you have to find out the tabulate value tabulate value at 5 percent level of significance and 2 at 8 degree of freedom you got it has a 2.306 similarly the p value you can get it by using excel or any table you can use it so p value is this much so similarly standard error of b1 the formula is mac divided sum of square to f 2.38 so t calculated value is 4.529 by using this formula 
tabulated value is 2.306. Now compare this two. Compare this two. This value is greater than 2.306 and 4.5 also greater than 2.306. So both the values B0 and B1 both are significant. Both are significant. So we can get this Excel output as we are, I have shown you in Excel output degree of freedom sum of square we have value significant value so now since we have we are we have used a simple regression equation so the significant value of f that the significant value p value of f and and what is and this value that is equal in case of simple linear regression the value of f and value of t that will be different but the p value will be same so now we have to talk about the analysis of residual. So residual is the difference between the actual data and this estimated data. So residual plots are very useful to measure its significance. So to measure its significance, we can draw the different residual plots. So among them, the plot histogram of the residual, either the the are normal or uh, residual are normal or not that can be estimated by use, uh, using this histogram similarly residual against the fitted values that can be drawn similarly plot residual against the independent variable and residual among the chronological order so histogram that provides the normality assumptions of the error on normal content plot also can be used Similarly, plot of residual against the fitted values or independent variable can be observed for the checking of the constant variance, which is the assumption of this regression equation. Similarly, the plot of residual against the time provided a check to the independence of the error term that can be done. So, here I have shown the example of the residual plot of our data, previous data. The residual should have no symmetrical pattern there must there there should not be any type of pattern and the residual plot below shows the scatter and no systematic change as we observe so there might find out source pattern the point in the residual plot had a core pattern so the straight line fit poorly so we cannot use the regression line which you have stimulated the points in the plot shows the mode is spread for the larger value experimental variable so prediction will be less accurate when your is large is if you got such type of prediction so while increasing the data of x the the error term also is spreading and that is the case of heterostasticity so let's see next one example i will read this slide Many factories affect the ways of workers, the industry they work in, the type of job, their education and their experience, and the changes in the general level of wages. We look at the sample of 59 married women who hold customer service job in Indiana Bay. The following table gives their weekly wages as a specific point in time also their length of service with their employer in the month the size of the place of the work is recorded simply as large 100 or more workers or small because the industry job type and the time of measurements are same for all 59 subjects we expect to see a clear relationship between the wage and length of service now here simple linear relationship within the ways and length of service we are going to observe it so there are 39 observations of the ways and uh, length of service and its size is given ways length of service size ways length of service and size so bank wages and length of service we are going to study it now issue is do wages rise with experience if the experience increases then ways also increases that we have to measure here so let's plot it in the scatter diagram you can use excel to find out this scatter plot so here we can clearly say that the 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 while increasing the uh, 
length of service, the wages increases. So either this relationship is significant or not, that we have to check it. So from the table, we have to find out n is equal to 59. These are all the data I have taken from the Excel. So now you are requested to find out the P1 and P0. As you know the relationship equation, beta naught that is equals to summation x y minus summation x summation y divided by square root not to square root summation x minus x square root square that can be used. So here uh, we have to find out what is the least square regression line for the predicted ways from the length of service. Suppose a woman has been with her bank for 125 months. What do you predict? She will earn. What will be her earning? That we have to predict it. If her actual wages is 423, then what is her residual? So sum of square of the residual for the entire sample. That we have to find out. Can you calculate it? I will give you time to calculate it. Please do it. So hypothesis may be a beta 1 is equal to 0, b1 is greater than 0, t you can find out, the p values you can find out, conclusion you have to draw it. So this is given you for the task, please. So you can find out the 95% confidence, similarity distribution that you can estimate it. Is given for your work and do the ways rise with the experience. Can you find out the output? So I will show the Excel output here. So this data, this is the data, ways and length of service I have kept here. So I think you are doing it. And I will give this value the regression equation. So data analysis that we have to use. Regression, then in the regression, A1 to what value we have actually, actually from this way is up to I think 50. Okay, this is Y range, and similarly, that we have to find out length of service as a input X variable. So you can put length of service. as i have selected from cell one so cell one has the label value so click in label similarly output where you want to put this output okay i'll put uh, output here c1 so just click ok then you will get the output. so this is the output so your multiple r did you find out it so r and r square value is this Standard reader is this. Sum of square is this. Mean sum of square. We have value. And the significant value is this. Similarly, you can find out the B0. This value is B0. And this L is B1. So, please calculate it and compare with this output. So, this is your output which I got it from the Excel compare your result with this so y hat we can write it as a y hat that is equals to 349.4.5905x these are the values from here intercept and yes coefficients So here you see the F value is this and the significant value, value is this. That means the your regression coefficient is significant. It is less than 0 0.05. Similarly, you see this coefficient P1 and SP value is less than 0 0.05. This is also so less than 0 0.05. So these all coefficients are significant. So this regression coefficient is significant. So which can be used. Now this regression equation can be used for further prediction. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to me.